death of Brian Wilde. Uh, that's a summary of the news so far at uh, 9.32. It's now time for Entertainment 24 with... Tasman Vijay Khan. Good evening. It's only March, but the TV awards season has already left some in Soapland with a teary eye. After failing to get a BAFTA nomination this week, Coronation Street lost out to the Bill, surprisingly, at last night's Royal Television Awards. Other winners included the BBC's Top Gear for Best Features and Lifestyle Series, and wildlife genius Sir David Attenborough took home the Lifetime Achievement Award. Well, earlier I spoke to TV critic Rachel Roberts about the big winners and losers. I asked her why she thought Corey wasn't nominated. I think it's following in the footsteps. Last year, it's always been a cert. The big soaps have won up till this point. But last year, there was a shock as well at the BAFTAs when Casualty won in the same category. And I feel like it's set a precedent. Um, I don't know if there's something political going on here because Coronation Street is consistently a brilliant soap, has incredible storylines. I'm not saying the bill wasn't a worthy winner too, but it is, it is a big surprise. Well, the bill's done really well as a soap. Is it the, the new big competition for soaps like EastEnders and Emmerdale? Yeah, I think it's in, in a way it's good for the bill to be recognised because quite often you know, it was put in sort of separate categories. Um, and, it, you know, it, that also has amazing storylines too and just as much work goes into it. So they're probably rightfully pleased, feeling very chuffed with themselves today. And looking ahead to the BAFTAs, what can we expect? Obviously, entertainment's going to be a, a huge category, mm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, as, as always. I think one of the big stories at the BAFTAs is going to be... It's, uh, the best actress is going to be between Judi Dench but and... Cranford. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Cranford's going to be a big story there. All the big, you know, the big drama, the costume dramas are the things to watch out for at the BAFTAs. And what about for best comedy performance? Because it seems like you know you've got a, 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 a battle between the mm. younger generation mm. and the older generation. Well, yeah, at the um, RTS Awards last night, we saw the sort of younger. We had the flight of the Concord, um, the, the Peep Show, comedies like that, um, doing really, really well. One thing I would like to say is, in all of those categories, though, where are the women? <laughs> you know, we have a lot of males. You know, there was not one woman in any of those categories, which I think is a bit shocking when we have women like incredible comics and comedians like Julia Davies and Ruth Jones. I'd like to a bit of girl power in those categories, please. And uh, Sir David Attenborough, you know, winning the Lifetime yes. Achievement Award. Amazing. Yeah, a, a totally well-deserved win, yeah. but he is one of the vice presidents on that <laughs> board, interestingly. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh so God, I'm not saying he voted for himself, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little of uh, sort of friends and then yeah. favouritism there. Yeah. But he's a great guy. Oh, yeah, and it, very, very well deserved. There's no two ways about it. It's incredible. And uh, uh, looking at the best entertainment programmes, uh, obviously X Factor's been knocked off mm. by Britain's Got Talent. Yes. What's happening there? Well, it's, it's hardly surprising, you know. And, uh, you know, still, Simon Cowell's got a hand in Britain's Got Talent too, so it's not going to... You know, he won't be pulling his high-waisted trousers up in, in disgust. You know, he's, it's just another show. It's another talent show. X Factor's won for a couple of years. It's time for another talent show to come on board. TV critic Rachel Roberts there. You're watching Entertainment 24 from BBC News. Other top stories tonight. Kim Marsh and her husband Jack are splitting up. The singer who rose to fame as part of Hearsay and seen here on the right of your screen now stars in Coronation Street. The couple say the split is amicable. And Kerry Katona's TV programme has been suspended because the pregnant former Atomic Kitten has gone into rehab. The show Crazy in Love has given MTV some of its highest ever ratings. Now, whatever happened to the famous five? Well, we can assume they grew up, started paying tax, got married and had kids. Not a bad assumption as Disney's announced that a new cartoon featuring the children of Enid Blyton's famous five is to hit UK screens in early May. The animated series will premiere on the Disney Channel and will be called Famous Five on the Case. Well, earlier I asked Jeff Norton from Corian, who own the Famous Five brand, what they wanted to achieve by bringing it, bringing it back to 2008. We felt that it was really important to adhere to the original values of Enid Blyton in terms of outdoors, adventure, family and mystery. And we thought the time was right, we found the right partner with Disney and decided to make a fantastic show. 
And does the new series remain faithful to those themes of adventure, mystery and friendship that we saw in the original Famous Five books? Absolutely. It's all about getting outdoors and having a great time with your friends and family. And I think Ian Blight would be really proud of it. Now, it does sound a little old-fashioned, doesn't it, compared to sort of the Bratz and uh, Paris Hilton. Now we're going back to the Famous Five kids. I actually think that they're really universal themes. I mean, the idea of spending time with people that you care about and having great fun, and in terms of entertainment, super sleuthing and getting to the bottom of a mystery. I mean, those are, those are great times no matter what era it is. And what kind of adventures can we expect these kids to get up to? These, guys are gonna, these kids are going to get up to all sorts of hijinks, whether it's thwarting thieves or uncovering <laughs> hoaxes. <laughs> And uh, obviously, the, the famous dog, Timmy, you know, he's back, isn't he? There, there, there is a new dog. It's not the original Timmy. Um, this is a dog named in honor of Timmy, and he's a Bernie's Mountain dog. Jeff Norton there from Corian. Well, Britain's acting world has lost two of its biggest names. Oscar winner Paul Schofield has died at the age of 86. He was a well-respected Shakespearean actor, but is probably best known for his role in the film A Man for All Seasons, which won him the Academy Award in 1967. Most actors are lucky to have one iconic role, but Brian Wilde, who died this morning, had two. He'll always be remembered as Foggy in Last of the Summer Wine and Prison Officer Barraclough alongside Ronnie Barker in Porridge. His Summer Wine co-presenter Peter Salis gave his reaction to the sad news to BBC News 24. He was a quiet man and he was his own man. Uh, I worked in a play in the West End with him the only time we'd worked together in the theater. And uh, it was a small cast of about six or eight, and we used to move about in each other's dressing rooms, uh, chatting and that sort of thing, when we were not actually on. But you go into Brian's dressing room, and he was reading a book. And uh, he was, uh, if I say he was a loner, that makes him sound a bit sort of sad, and uh, he wasn't that at all. But he just liked his own company, and he was, needless to say, absolutely marvellous to work with. I mean, you never had any sort of uh, problems with, with Brian as far as the work was concerned. And uh, I'm very, very sorry that he's gone. Peter Salas there talking about Brian Wilde. Well, that's it from me. For more entertainment news, have a look at the BBC News website. That's bbc.co.uk forward slash entertainment news. Back to you, Tim and Sophie. Thank you, Tasman, Thank very you. much. Now, many hospitals in England had to turn away women in labour last year because they were full. That's